Welcome back to the Formula One Breakdown Podcast with me, Just Trev, and Adenada Gaming. How you doing, dude? I'm very well. Hopefully you're well, and hopefully everyone else is well. Indeed, and welcome back to Formula One. And after, what is it, three weeks, four weeks break? It just seems like forever. We're back with yes, round forever. four and all the upgrades and a whole bunch of news in between. What's been cracking? Yes, so what's been cracking is a lot. There's been a lot. Uh, so recently it's just been confirmed that uh, Alfie Torrey's leader, Francis tossed or whatever is going to be leaving at the end of this year or season I should say mm. uh, so and apparently uh, I forgot his name is Mika someone from Ferrari is going to be taking over his role yeah uh, what is going on so with that, Ferrari they, they, they just constantly they settled everyone. down yeah is everybody, it's like it's they like don't. the rats leaving the ship, isn't it? The sinking ship, almost like. Literally, just leaving one after another. I, I don't know. So, is the McLaren? Well, not really, but James Key's left. Yeah. And all that yeah. stuff. It's. Isn't it Absolutely. funny though? Isn't it funny though, Aiden, that McLaren, we've been bitching and moaning about them ever since the season started. And all of a sudden, you, you don't see uh, Zach anymore. He's very sort of like under the radar now, isn't he? Do you want me to tell something? Can you just bring that up? Over this entire weekend, I haven't seen him once. Right, exactly. I, 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 I have I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna say anything like that, cause, cause he was totally under the radar. I wasn't expecting it, and I thought it's just gonna be in the limelight as usual. Yeah, that's exactly um, what I was thinking. Of, particularly after the break leading up to um, round four, Azerbaijan. That, there was so much talk about you know McLaren are going to be bringing this that, and he was so vocal about it. And all of a sudden, he's not anywhere. Is there something to read between the lines here? Maybe he's being told to sort of like back off, back down by the board, or I wonder. Unless he's, unless he could be replaced with some like whoever is over at the indie side. Mm. They know like how you have like the sports and all that stuff for NASCAR and IndyCar and all that stuff. He could be going to do that now. Yeah, Why interesting. Some, Interesting. The IndyCar side could be coming to do his side, and where he won't sound too much deluded like he is. But yeah, it, it's it's weird. Then, yeah, very very strange to not see him anywhere in the paddock or anything anywhere was really was was kind of nice actually. <laughs> <laughs> but l- let me just ask you this: What is why are Ferrari losing so many people? Because it after this weekend, I would have thought everybody would be like, okay, so we we got something to work with now. I, I honestly, I don't know. Their their performance is pretty decent. Um, it was really decent from the sprint. That was getting a pole for that. That was that was uh, pretty decent and. Again, he got a pole in the qualifier. I, I don't know why. It's I have no words for it. Mm. It's, well, it's I guess weird. it'll play out over the next couple of weeks, and we'll see exactly what's yeah, been taking place. I've got a sneaking suspicion that that getting back to McLaren quickly is that Zach is either going to be ousted or he's been replaced in the whole F one structure. Or something. Well, because for him not to be there, it's just, I'm still like, like, hang on a sec. I mean, I didn't even think about this over the weekend. I only just thought about it now. It's like McLaren had kind of been under the radar that a decent-ish race you know, wasn't mm-hmm. too exciting. But it was just like, well, I haven't seen Zach anywhere. 
I wasn't going to say anything until you just said about it. A, a bad notice, so... It's... It's weird. Very strange. But anyway, back to Ferrari. Yeah. Um, the Scarlets. What's going on, man? I don't know. There's, there's just... There's just something weird going on there that I just don't understand why everybody's just like jumping ship. Mm, no, I don't. Is it is it because the FIA and we've got our own moniker for what FIA stands for, which we're not going to repeat here, but I'm I'm sure the listeners uh, can make up their own mind. Insert something, moniker here. Something. Yeah, so, something idiots uh, assemble. Um, yeah, look, what is it because the way that the FIA are trying to monetize take as much money out of the spectacle that is f1 on a weekend they're trying to monetize it make it more of a spectacle for the people who paid for their tickets and because you know tickets aren't cheap um and now they're bringing in this new sprint structure but we'll get on i'm so undecided about it though but then coming next year we have the f1 academy so, I, I don't get it. If they're trying to back down on, but then they're going to add more, I don't get it. Uh, is it? Uh, yeah, I mean, we could read so much into it and try and understand. Obviously, we, we're not in the know, but you could, we can only speculate from the, the armchair theorists that we are. But I just, I, I'm, I'm still struggling to understand where the FIA are trying to take Formula One. Um, whether they're trying to clearly they're trying to monetize it as best as they can um they're trying to obviously break heavily into the american market obviously with las vegas mm. miami and and so on god knows where it'll be next probably new york but it's like actually money that might be interesting um but it's just trying to figure out like what are they trying to do with uh, the structuring of the sprint race obviously it it was a new format that they're bringing in so that they're kind of like inverted commas testing it testing the waters to see how it works but a lot of the the drivers are not happy with the structure no they're not and i don't think we're either happy either well i'm not i'm not uh, i'm not i'm not I'm, not, I'm, I'm kind of undecided about it because it i'm so used to like getting the, the three free practices and you get to see the cars and they get to fiddle with the mechanics of the car and and make it better oh. as each practice gets on. And that was one of the problems, right? Another problem was people, uh, with it being, so if people don't know, Friday it is one practice qualifying. Sunday, sh uh, sprint shootout. So there's three rounds of that. Then you have the sprint race. Then the Sunday, it's the race. And... I don't think people are overly happy about the qualifying being on a Friday and where people have to work on a Friday, they're missing out on the qualifying. That's exactly people, it, yeah. That's exactly I it. Think, I, yeah, yeah, get, carry I, on, sorry. I, I, I don't think people are overly happy with that. I don't really think they care about the practice, but I know the teams care about getting free practices in, which is vital, obviously. Because how do they know what their car's going to be like? And that is the big thing is, um, for, I mean, you know, if I was working on a Friday and uh, the qualifying was on and I've got a ticket for Friday, I'd be like, well, hang on, that's not fair. You know, what am I paying here for? Then? So the FIA are kind of shooting themselves in the foot a little bit by doing that. that um, then they're also, uh, shooting, yeah. they're also shooting themselves in the foot with how long one of the sessions was. I wasn't sure which one it was, but I know the FIA are going to be changing some parts to that, as yeah. some of it was way too long. And I think it was the sprint out, shoot out. The sprint one shoot out did. thing, yeah, yeah. And watching Chad Kravitz... Uh, notebook he was on about saying that i believe it was ss1 is a flight to singapore to tokyo then ss2 is singapore to tokyo ss3 is tokyo to singapore 
I, yeah, it, it's I so it's... confusing. I mean, he was getting confused. I was getting confused listening to him. I, I, I have no idea what the hell they're doing. No idea. I mean, that's exactly. What, and the more I think about it, the more I discuss it with you about it, the more I dislike it. I was actually sitting there laughing my head off because when he got to the second one, I said the third one's going to be Singapore to Tokyo. But then he said Tokyo to Singapore. And I thought, God damn it. I, I still don't get it. I, I, I don't know what the FIA are trying to do. I know they're trying to um, monetize it, obviously, because it's a business, right? So you've got to make money from it. And, you know, it's, mm. it's such a global sport kind of thing. But I think they almost forcing people who watch it on TV to not watch it on TV and go to the track and watch it or are they or is it the reverse they driving people away from coming to an F1 weekend and watch it on TV where they can get replays coverage on demand and and as you saw with Sky Sports what they can do and and all that sort of stuff so what are the what the flipping heck I is the FIA know, doing I don't know but as we said in the last podcast about when I said, are they doing this for entertainment purposes and mm. all that stuff, this brings back that point into what the sprint shootout change or whatever. It, it's like they're trying to just do this for the entertainment part. Obviously, it should be entertainment, but... Where do they get the think, money from mostly? Is it from TV rights? I would have thought so. Uh, or is it from the um, the live weekend, the people coming in? I think it's from TV. TV people pay a shit ton of money to get the rights to broadcast it. So millions and millions. So maybe they're doing it for that. Could be. Who knows? But they should have just let it be free practices, qualifying on the Saturday, Sunday. The, yeah. Yeah, Raise. I'm, 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 and just I'm with you on that and, one totally. And just totally scrap the entire sprint idea because it's you're just literally wasting your tires and you're wasting fuel that could yeah possibly and, and be the whole Sunday. and the whole thing about the FI is net zero emissions and all this sort of stuff. So you're not exact you're countering by having these extra races. And not only that, they've put a limit on how many engines you can have and all these sort of limitations on the teams and you're throwing in sprint yeah. races with the sprint shootout it's wear and tear so they, they have to so, counter that somewhere so I've, i could be wrong about this but i think they've already sorted out a plan for that i think they're they're doing like an unlimited power unit thing no like how has rari i believe and when red bulls changed their uh power unit whatever already i think isn't uh, it from three to four now or something there was uh, there was something that the the commentators were talking about saying that they've upped the power limitations from three units to four or or something i i, I stand to be corrected uh, obviously uh, but i i still don't think that would be enough though no especially i don't think so for, so there's 24 races and half of them have got a sprint race in, and I don't think four is going to be enough. No, definitely not. No, because the wear and tear, especially if you're, you're blasting through a sprint shootout, what, 14 laps or whatever, how many laps, and then you've got the actual race, sprint race, which is, this one was 17 laps, I think. But, yeah, I don't know, man. It's, it's like, I just don't get it. I, I can understand trying to uh, maximize the money return and from the business aspect from but if you're a ticket holder you want to finish work on a friday go off for the weekend arrive on a friday afternoon oh. and and watch Just some free out. practice and chill out relax and and not I, I, to yeah. watch practice I can, I, and I, I, I can find what what I what it's, I foresee a structure that might work might be a one free practice on a Friday, and one free practice on a Saturday. Then the um, uh, sprint uh, quali, and then the sprint race. All of that on a Saturday. That for mm. for ticket holders that that might be um, worth their while. And then Saturday just the main race. 
Because like, the whole point of this is not really what us viewers see. It's what the teams can do in the free practice sessions. And that's what the, the, the mess up is. is It's not giving the teams enough time, 60 minutes or however long it is, um, to go out there, do, you know, whatever, 15, 20 laps, figure out what the problems might be, the little gremlins, um, change setups and try different things and all that sort of stuff. It's... It's almost like the FAA are trying to make it difficult for the teams to make it more competitive. And it just, I think it's a backfire. Yeah. It is. And definitely should be wrong because we spent, <laughs> I don't know how long on that, but uh, there's still a lot more to talk about. And again, talking about the FIA, there's been uh, allegations on Mohammed Ben. Uh, for being sexist, bullying, and abuse allegations on him. So, I don't know. We, I can't, I don't think we can possibly say he has, he hasn't, but there are allegations on him at the moment in time. Hmm, where there's smoke? Hmm. I, I don't know. I only see you don't have this new clue, but something interesting for, uh, Especially the FIA president as well. So yeah, it's 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 all, it's, it's, it's all. I was just going to say it's all happening. There's something going on that is just not quite right. I think they on new territory here, and they're trying to find their feet to see where it mm. works and where it doesn't work. And and as fans of F1, maybe we should relax a little bit and just let them kind of find their way and but we're we're entitled to our opinion of course i mean that's the whole point of this podcast is to talk about the fia and f1 f2 and so on but yeah it's i, I don't know man it just seems like they, they they're treading water and they don't know which way to turn and where the flipping shore is to get out of the water that just uh that's how it feels like for me particularly mm. after this weekend but um mm. yeah this that, that sprint race structure with one practice just it it doesn't make sense for the teams as clearly as i think half of them have said there's not enough time for them to figure out what is the best setup and and so and i think that was that was evident in the the mm. qualification for the sprint it was just the amount, madness the, the other thing is they should take note of how many incidents there was mm. at this weekend there was more than any other race except for melbourne obviously that was chaotic but bringing it down to one practice and there's quite a few mistakes in that practice as well so something serious they shouldn't be taking one two more practices away from teams they yep. need to have it all yep. exactly they they need to, I, I get they drive around the track every single year but in adding more tracks to the mix isn't going to help people, is it? No, it's not. I mean, as it is, this is the longest calendar season in F1 history. So, uh, yeah, again, still it, 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 it. Oh, there's there's okay. still so much to, to to try and figure out where it's where it's headed. Um, it certainly is interesting from a viewer's perspective, but I feel for the teams having to. They're like paddling a boat without paddles, man. They're up shit creek and trying to figure out which way is the best way to go. I feel for them because that's that, that can't be easy, man, to have one practice session. I know we've said it already, but to have one practice session to have the best setup under 60 minutes, that's insanity. Mm. It's not as if you could take a road car, you know, it's not as if you're driving a road car. It's These are complicated machines and, and the, oh, yeah. the, 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 the tweak, the little tweaking of that button on suspension or whatever just changes everything so to do that in 60 minutes that that's that's crazy but yeah the sprint race um qualifications or what, what do they call it sprint shootout is that what it was the, the quality oh my god why change the lingo one two and three then it goes oh. to sprint race oh, for god's sakes just call it a um. sprint quality Something else I want to touch up that I haven't 
put down is Johnny Herbert. He seems to gone missing. Oh. I. So, no, the twenty twenty one disaster of Max Hinton, the championship, and we'll get to this next point in a minute. Uh, obviously, we know how Johnny Herbert was. He was pretty mm. decent as a commentator. He and. He's been told that he hasn't got any contracts this year for the F1, and do you think that's strange? He's just that she disappeared. And yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he was axed by by Sky Sports ahead of the the season, so yeah, yeah. I don't. I've, maybe we're reading too much into it. Mm, it could be. But still, but, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I, I kind I kind of liked his his style because he was he was kind of funny and 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 very forthright. Yeah, is that's what you want in the commentator to have a bit of a laugh and well, to actually be you, you know, I I think I think one of the the biggest problems is when you have one um, channel that uh, I'm talking Sky Sports here, um, British yeah. media. <laughs> we all know how British media is, or any media, in fact, uh, you know, not just British media, but any media, is, it can be a bit of a nightmare. But oh, yeah, because, British uh, okay, but we're talking about Sky Sports British commentators, they're always going to be like, they, they can't be non partial, they have to be partial to, to like Hamilton or Russell or Norris, or they, they're never really sort of like just down the middle of the road. And that's what I've always seen anyway. Um, but I, 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 which is interesting because Johnny Herbert being axed is like, well, that's weird because Jeez. he's English. He's, I wonder, I mean, may, are okay. we reading too much into it? Are we saying like somebody got rid of him because he was too honest? I don't know, but it's fun. I reckon it's got something to do with the Max and Lewis thing from 2021. And talking about that, I actually laughed at this when I see this. Apparently Max fans are signing a petition to get Lewis his championship <laughs> for the 2021. I, I laughed at that because it's totally sh- stupid. It's, you know what, the internet. The internet is the strangest place, man. And yeah, we are. We're on it. <laughs> it's it's just so weird that that people are getting all uppity about stupid stuff. But anyway, let's just talk about the sprint, stru- the race, not the structure. For the love of God, please. Oh, okay. Sprint shootout qualifications: Leclerc, Verstappen, Perez. The whole weekend was the three of them. Oh yeah. But how about Williams? And do you want me to? Go on. Go on. McLaren, what on earth did they... Was their strategy? <laughs> I, 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 I lost it. I really did lose it at their strategy for Lando. Yeah. Um, I, I really, who knows? I, um, yeah. I, I really lost it for that. Yeah, I, who knows what the hell was going on there. And the fact that Aston Martin's uh, um, DRS wasn't working on... Um, oh, yeah. Is, uh, uh, on what was his name Alonso yeah that was cheap as all these little gremlins are funny how when all these little upgrades come in or well, not little some of them big some of them not so big but th- they seem to like push other little issues coming to the front which is rather interesting mm. but I was surprised mostly by um, Albon by Williams and 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 it was good to see uh, Sarge doing well up until he collided with the wall they, they... They're actually starting to find their shoes, and they I'm are. Sure. They, they, I'm surprised. I'm, 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 I'm surprised and enjoying it because every team should do well. It shouldn't just be rebel, 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 rebel. Absolutely, rebel, absolutely. Rebel. Which is, which is what made me so happy when I saw Leclerc. I was like, "Come on, here we go, Ferrari in the mix. That's it. That's better." And uh, I'm, I'm happy for. Ferrari. Also, you know that uh, how much Leclerc likes to moan a lot, but 
we, we're happy for her. Uh, Show me a Formula One driver that doesn't moan. Austin. Yeah. <laughs> he's got nothing to moan about. <laughs> uh, uh, he's he's given know. up moaning, I think. <laughs> give, yeah. him, give him another uh, year. Give him another year and then maybe he'll be moaning. Give him me. another year at McLaren. <laughs> Maybe give him another week, in fact. <laughs> yeah, no, look, I, I, yeah, McLaren, I don't know, you're right, I don't know what on earth they were thinking. I reckon there was a brain fart and somebody overthought something. Yeah, that, that was not good. That there was, was a lot good. of overthinking in this race. There was a lot of overthinking and it didn't go to the plan. So, uh, what else? Uh, I like how we completely missed out practice, but anyway. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, this is the thing. We we can talk about whatever we want. Um, yeah, free oh, practice well, yeah. for Stappen, Leclerc, Perez, and then the sprint, Leclerc, or no, the, the quali, Leclerc, for Stappen, Perez. Those three throughout the entire weekend were so close. I mean, and jump, absolutely jump brilliant. Them. Go on. The Formula 2 OMG. That was amazing, especially for Oliver Oliver Behrman. Jesus, broken steering and still yep. gets a pole. I, d- yep. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how he did that. Yeah, that, that, that you know you know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of Jensen Button in the, the Honda, the Braun, uh, when he's, uh, the strap on, on his helmet had broken. And mm. I, I forget that I, I might have been Australia, it might have been Silverstone. I can't remember, but I still remember watching that race. And he's and he's when he's going down the straights, he's holding his helmet down. Oh yeah, I, mean. <laughs> I was just like, I just want this guy to win so badly now, just because of that. Absolutely brilliant, and it was exactly the same with with Behrman. How the hell you can get away with that on that street course with the I, knackered I, I steering? Just amazing. Yeah. Quality. I don't think any. I can't say that, but uh, Gremlin's talking about that. Alpine has. Oh God. A little yeah. part of Aston. They've all had Gremlins this weekend, and this is weird. Alpine had massive Gremlins, and every single thing they did, there's just got. There's getting the Gremlins. It's, Otmar must be like so, like pissed. Uh, he must have pissed himself laughing at at McLaren at first, and then now he must be hitting his head against the wall so hard because oh, everything yeah. is going wrong. Everything. I don't know how they got this so wrong. So there was a fire in practice with Gasly's car for hydraulic leak. Yep. And. A couple contacts with the wall as well. Gasly yeah. again. Uh, I mean, where, where does it where does it come to a point though, Aiden? When when if you're a um, let's say you are Otmar or whoever, and your driver keeps messing up and everything seems to be going wrong, at what point do you say get another driver? Well. I'd at least give them a couple of months until you get to after. Because what would be their goal this year? I mean, to to finish within the the top five or six? I'd probably give them half the year. I was just going to say, I would give them half half the the races and say, look, if you don't prove yourself, then it's time to bring the test driver in or, or something. I had to give him 14 races, so that's 24 this season. So I'd give him... Give him 60% about. and see where, see where they are, yeah. Give him around about that. And it's... It, it just do what they did with Ricardo. Hmm. But obviously don't go exactly down that line of... You're giving him 18 million or whatever it was. Or 80 or whatever. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I'd take it. <laughs> I'm I, would as well. I mean, come on. It's, it's, it's messed up. 
Just imagine how many Crown Vicks you can get with that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started on the Crown Vicks. Meh. Anyway, okay. So, so oh, yeah, free practice. Uh, anyway. <laughs> free practice for Stappen, Leclerc, Perez. Qualifications: Leclerc, Verstappen, Perez. Sprint: Leclerc, Perez, Verstappen. Result: Perez, Leclerc, Verstappen. Yeah. I mean, you know, those three were on it this weekend, absolutely on it. And then, obviously. <laughs> Bring in George Russell and Verstappen. Oh boy, uh, you know there, there's something. Uh, who was it? Uh, it was a Damon Hill that said uh, Verstappen is a sore loser. He, I'm not being funny, but he is. <laughs> he is. Yeah. He can give it out, but he can't take it. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. That's exactly yeah. it, and, and that's right. Look, I support Red Bull. Um, I, not I necessarily do. for Stappen. I, I, what I love, okay. So this question was thrown at me um, fairly recently, and um, my response was, "I love Red Bull," uh, and the and the the immediate comeback was, "But for Stappen, I said, no, no, no. I didn't say for Stappen. I said Red Bull. And there's only one reason: it's because Adrian Newey is an absolute master at designing cars." And oh, yeah. um, I've been a huge fan of, of Nui for, since forever. And that Red Bull is down to his design, its success. And there is just something about Nui's brain thinks completely and utterly differently to everybody else's. And um, everyone needs the uh, Nui. Everyone, every single team needs a, a Nui. Copy of him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he he is an absolute genius. In fact, my father-in-law has um, his book, um, Adrian Newey Design, or whatever it's called. And um, if my eyes weren't so knackered, I'd, I'd read it, but uh, I can't see the pages, so it's kind of pointless. But um, he is a genius. Now, now correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I'm certainly a lot older than you are, but I've wasn't seen. Adrian Newey part of Williams? Where was he before? Because I can't remember. I, I For I the life of me, I can't remember. I, I'm just I, trying I to think. Know. Yeah. Let me let me check Google because I know Google will know. Um, Honest part is I'm just barely older than Oliver Behrman. So <laughs> <that's it. laughs> there, you, there you go. You see? how to? There we go. So How to Build a Car, the, auto, the Autobiography of the World's Greatest Formula One Designer by Adrian Newey. He, he is an absolute genius. Um so, cheapers. Um, I'm trying to think of the teams that he was with, but anyway, um, I, I I can't I can't think. But all I remember is is um, supporting um, back in the day, Adrian Newey uh, and Patrick Head. I think the two of them were. I'm sure the two of them were in a in a um, like with Williams or something like that. Maybe the listeners can drop us a. Uh, a comment or, or something like that and a bit of help and let us know because I can't remember. But all I know is that his designs are just um, phenomenally brilliant. Every little aspect that he designs just increases the car's pace. And that's why I, I went back to the person and said, look, it's it's not a Verstappen or Perez thing. It's a, it's a Red Bull. It's the car design. Mm. And to be completely fair, they the people who design the cars don't really get that much hype, unlike no, the they drivers. Don't. Yeah, they don't. And the team prints plus and all that stuff. So they don't really get recognised. Same as the people who created Senna's MP4. That was a absolute beast of a car back in the day. Obviously, they got a bit of hype, obviously, but nowadays you don't really get a lot of it, except from if your car's really terrible, obviously people... Yeah. <laughs> James Key. Uh, people will obviously know that it's... You know, the reason why people's got driving this very little tractor. Yeah. But anyway... Uh, uh, what else? Lando, fifth quickest in practice. 
pity they couldn't be carried through. No, no, no. It, it would be nice. <laughs> would, I, I tell you what, I, I think the, the funny thing is, I know at, in Australia we said that we're looking forward to see where the teams are with the, the upgrades and everything like that. I think the sprint race structure it's kind of like overshadowed the whole how the cars are going to perform. And if it were a normal weekend, I think we would have seen better results. Something else that is getting on my nerves is what you sure going to have sprint races in June at certain tracks. Why don't you just not do it at every single track? Because it's going to just end up getting confused. Right. Yeah. Everyone's maybe, going to be maybe they Maybe they're headed that way. They they could be heading that way, but mm. we just it's, it's been the first race since the new one. We just have to give it another chance, but we'll see from how it's going at this point in time. Not very impressed with it, and I don't. And other people aren't impressed with it. But as you say, you got to try new things, and some things can either go good or bad, and yeah. I see. Some people are saying, yeah, it's good. Some people are saying it's bad. A.K.A. us are saying you, it's bad. Cause... Do you think it's... Because um, I know some of the, the lesser teams... Oh, it's so it's such such a weird thing to, to say this, but it, it's, it's almost like the, the main teams are, are not interested in it. The top teams are not interested in it because it could jeopardize the championship, whereas the, sure. the lesser uh, point-earning teams are going, well, this is our chance to earn points could be but so adrian knew he did work for williams there we go that's why that's why i remember that's why i, rem I remembered him there we go anyway <laughs> total side note there sorry about yeah, that uh, all the listeners yeah, uh, apologies yeah. there you go as, as we say we are we, we just talk about all sorts of we go all over the place yeah, as we are absolutely right now talk about sprint yeah, back to sprint track. racing, <laughs> but that's the talking point of it, isn't it? I mean, it. it I think it, it, is, it is a major cock up. Yes. <laughs> there we go. There you have the Formula One breakdown podcast. Is it's a cock up? There we go. Fantastic. Okay, so welcome let's to <laughs> welcome to a one hour podcast talking about a sprint race and yeah, nothing exactly. else. But 37 anyway. minutes in and we don't like the uh, sprint race because it's a cock up. There we go. So okay. Talking about go on. other issues, uh, Alpha Tori, I don't know what happened there. They had, no, we've already sp spoken about Alpha Tori, haven't we? No, no we haven't. Alpha Tori, uh, that's, again, they were also had gremlins as well. Since the news has come out about Franz Toss and all that stuff, Yuki and DeVries have both had a, a bit of a uh, nightmare for what is your What is your take on Yuki? We spoke about this last time, didn't mm. we? Uh, mm -hmm. After this weekend, I still don't like him. Not as a person, just as his, his driving style... He, he himself admitted that he is mentally and physically not strong. So fucking sort it out then. You're getting paid millions. He 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 gets angry pretty quickly and 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 again needs, Yeah. He needs to calm himself down. He and then really again does. he is like a youngster. You know, um, Max was the same. You know, all the youngsters. Himself. Yeah, he's still finding himself. Exactly. Yeah. So, himself, but... yeah, well, well, there you go. You see, I mean, there's there's so much to, like, we, we forget about that, you know, I don't know about you. When I was 18, I wasn't thinking about making millions. Jesus. I mean, you know, these guys have been thrust into a limelight, into the biggest racing events in the world, and they're not performing, and they're getting paid millions for it, and there's a responsibility to perform, and, you know, how to how be, much is it down to car gremlins and 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 driver attitude and all that stuff? To be completely fair, I, I was thinking of a millionaire since I was around about two years old or whatever. So how's it working for you? <laughs> it's actually going pretty well. <laughs> very much. Oh, so you got the sponsorship? God damn it! Oh yes, I got, I got two million. 
<laughs> we may bring one to here. Uh, but well, anyway. if you're making money, can you buy me a PS5, please, and send it down to me? That'd be great. Awesome. Thank you. Brilliant. You heard that, chat. You said yes. Okay, so <laughs> let's carry on. <laughs> Let's uh, let's carry on. Go on then. Where where are we in this in this uh, podcast? Uh, I don't know. Sprint it's result. Let's okay. Let's just get into the result because we haven't even talked about the flipping race yet. So the the sprint result was Perez, Leclerc, Verstappen. Those three once again, right? Mm. Red Bull, Ferrari. It's good to see Ferrari in that mix. Yeah. Very, it's very nice. Very, very nice. All right. Uh, Are we done with the sprint now? Because I'm tired about talking about this damn yeah, sprint. I was, I was tired of that a while back. <laughs> uh, I, well, about two minutes in? Ten minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'd oh, given no. up about two minutes in. But anyway, okay. So let's talk about the race. Finally, uh, we get to Sunday in the race. What can we expect? What did you think was going to happen? Honestly, that first corner... I've, I was saying to myself, oh, yeah, there's going to be a crash. There's going to be a crash. There's going to be a crash. Was oh, there... you know what? We didn't touch on. We didn't touch on George hitting Verstappen. Oh, no, we didn't. Oh, well, <laughs> Back to the sprint anybody. we go. <laughs> God damn it. Right, that's me. I'm off. Uh, <laughs> that's it. That's the end of the podcast. See you. Bye. Okay. Right. No, oh. Okay, very, very quickly. Um, no, I, you know what? Nobody was in the wrong there. It was a racing incident as far as I'm concerned. And it, it was wasn't, f- yeah, it wasn't forced. George is not that kind of driver. He's not going to push somebody off because he's only going to jeopardize his own race. So that was just a racing incident. Regardless of what Max says, Max is just a hothead. Boom, done. That's my opinion. What's yours? Well, we, we sort of spoke about it. But anyway, uh, maybe I'm just going to race quickly. Uh, again, Behrman. Throughout this entire weekend, he's dominated Baki. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm honestly hats off to him. I'm, I'm, he's seriously got some talent right there. Yeah, and he should actually really be making it into the Formula One, especially if you're going to win with broken steering. Yeah, absolutely. Not every. <laughs> But then again, you know what? This this brings it brings in another argument though. Is is like, well, not an argument, but it's like the the whole like, Oscar Piastri, for example, millions, millions, and millions and millions to get him into a team, and he's meh. Yeah, yeah. You know, so and if you're Behrman, and is he, is he going to outperform, or is he going to be better? I mean, you don't know until you give the kid a try. But you know, how many teams are going to take a chance? I honestly don't know. There's a lot of hype around him, but I don't really see any. There was sort tons of special... about Piastri too, but he didn't. He hasn't done anything. Uh, I mean, he's still finding his feet. Let's not be harsh. Let me. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm. I'm being too harsh. You know, he's still finding his place in in the F1 world, and and it's a major, major step up, and and so on. So you know, fair but use. Think... We give him space. <laughs> We've already four races. We're coming up to the fifth one next week. And you think he should have sort of found the issues by now. But again, we can't be too harsh, obviously. It's still his first year. But yeah. uh, but we are talking Formula One, yeah. It's not as if you're yeah. uh, off the street straight into Formula One. You've, you've, you've built up to this point. Yeah, you, know, you, you haven't you, gone through Formula Four, yeah. Formula Three, Formula Four. Now for exactly you, you've paid your dues you've paid your dues and, and now it's time to get in the car it. yeah exactly so you know he's he's had his chances and and, and you know again this brings in the point of like oh, how long do you give a driver Ooh. Mm. again mm. as we said around about halfway or six percent free well then i think we'll have to reassess in halfway and and see maybe do like a performance <laughs> Round about all this time, we'll get back to you. So I'm going to have to put a note down saying, <laughs> saying about how the breeze. See, you see, uh, you see uh, uh, listeners of the podcast, Aiden is the brains. I'm just the mouth. There we go. Oh, he's, yeah. He's, I, he's, I, he's, I, I, he's I really making notes. Brain, so <laughs> I can just literally 
<laughs> I was gonna I, I was gonna make a joke earlier in your stream uh, about me not having the best brain, but Jesus, I can remember quite a lot. So I will obviously <laughs> have a reminder for all this time, and we'll see how that goes. Yep, August this time we'll 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 have a reassess and see how Piastri is doing. Well, I'm not yeah. sure which race is in August, so we'll oh, have to well, see. Yeah. We'll we'll. We'll worry about it as as the time comes into it. Okay, so race. Just, just look at my community post and you'll see that a day when I'll say. But anyway, the race. Uh, as first we said, corner. As I said, first corner. I thought that was going to be a crash, but yep. was there? Yeah, so did I. I was I was expecting the way that Verstappen was pointing his car at the start. I was thinking, oh, this is going to get spicy, man. But uh, yeah, no, it was brilliant. Then it got on to a little further up, and there's a bit of contact with Bottas, uh, Piastri, and uh, Albon. One, well, one of the Williams. So yeah. there's a bit of contact there. Obviously, nothing it was a racing incident, so can't really do a lot. Everyone is bunched up. So I was impressed with um, Sergeant's. Um racing oh yeah um he was, was i mean the williams itself was actually doing really well um and and unfortunately for him he he crashed out and that's where the race changed hmm. purely and accidental they bring in for stappen um as soon as uh, sarge went off it almost seemed like an instantaneous knee-jerk reaction but obviously we're getting radio broadcasts from the teams a couple of seconds later than what's actually given to the drivers so yeah they may have done that i think they were the the commentators were wanting to find out exactly when that was broadcast and to the driver as opposed to when the accident happened to see if it was a knee-jerk reaction or if it was um, mm. a, um a suggestion to box prior to the accident but either way it changed the face and, and it certainly um Help Perez big time because he oh, was yeah. he was matching for Stappen, wasn't he? Um, oh yeah, he, uh, yeah no, he's he also he was also doing a bit more better than Verstappen because he, he had was. some issues. It is oh. so good to see, so good to see. It's gonna it is this tough. is gonna be tight. It's finally nice to not see Verstappen with a one next to his name. It's finally nice to see that, but we do obviously need other teams to yeah. be first, obviously, just not keep having Red Bull. So. Do you think that uh, the Mercedes made any sort of like headway with their upgrades? Well, they, I was going to say, they've been speaking so big about their upgrades, but... Yeah, it's like a... Hmm. I, thought, I thought it was going to be a bit better than... How they were saying, oh yeah, this is going to be magnificent and all that Again, stuff. Again, could could this be because the they didn't have enough time in free practice because of the sprint race setup? Okay. I think I think mm -hmm. it I, I think it's going to be vastly different next week. I think we're going to see a lot more, obviously, um, competitive times and next so on. Next week it's going to be free practices. Always. See, we're already confused. I'm already confused. Wait, what is what is the next race? Where is it? Miami. Oh God, they're in Miami. That's right. Oh snap! Wow. Okay. I'm, well. I'm already confused. I'm already confused. We gonna have. Wait, is Miami free... gonna have? Oh shit! Is Miami gonna have? Um... <laughs> Oh god! We, we've actually already we've already confused and yeah, not see, even. The, <laughs> <laughs> this is the confusing thing. Are they having normal free practice or are they having sprints and and everything? Um, well, they, well, they better make their choice mind up. Good they god, can't do they? they can't do one sprint some races and normal other races. It needs to be. All throughout sprint throughout the entire year, or 
it is it's so confusing it is so, so flipping confusing i do feel um, for drugs okay. as you say okay but right anyway. so, so so four days time they are going to be doing um on the 5th of may they're doing practice one 6th of may practice two 6th of may practice three 6th of may qualifying 7th of may the race so there's no sprint racing so next weekend is going to be very interesting to see how they are um, going to behave, what their setups are going to be, and and the qualifying. I think it's. I'm, I'm hoping more than I think. I'm hoping that it's going to be a lot closer because there is no silly sprint shootout bollocks. Mm. And I think this week can help out a little bit since we got the bank holiday. So it is bank holiday Monday here in the UK. So. And yeah. all that stuff. I think yeah. it helped out a little bit, but the sprint races when there aren't going to be like a bank holiday Monday, and people just got to work on the Friday, so they miss out on the practice instead of seeing it live, is mm. not very good, is it? Really? I drive yeah. and miss out. I drive and miss a practice and just watch a highlight for it instead of missing out Absolutely. on Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Events, yep. but anyway, what but I find we... what I find interesting though, Eden, is is that um, looking at the schedule that's uh, to come, um, and and just I don't know why they're doing this, but anyway, I don't know why they have to throw in the Miami race all the way across the <laughs> from Europe all the way to the United States, only for two weeks later to go back to um, Italy. Why don't they just throw in the United States with Canada, say, for example? Why is this traveling oh. backwards and forwards? It just doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. But I mean, I can understand doing a whole bunch in Europe and then doing a whole bunch in North America and then jumping down to South America. You know, that kind of vibe. Zero emissions. <laughs> My ass. They should get them just stop oil protestants to protest with FIA. Uh, <laughs> That's a whole different <laughs> podcast. Jeez. Yeah, we, we Hello, don't do you want to sponsor? <laughs> yeah, just stop oil. Uh, <laughs> get your orange powder right now. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're getting so off track here. Okay, yes. right, the race. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> that pit uh, stop that pit stop changed everything the the uh, oh, safety yeah. car again even though Alonso had some issues that overtaken Carlos was crazy around the corner that that was just crazy that was uh, that was on the inside wasn't it um, yeah, but then again inside. Carlos wasn't really happy with the setup was he he's been struggling the whole weekend yeah. And again, yes. sprint race setup did not help. No, he didn't. And um, it's nice to see Alonso not finding a bit of the funny side to Melbourne when obviously them two had a bit of contact. Mm. Obviously, there's no bit of rivalry between them. And I even also believe Carlos looked up to Alonso back in the day. So, uh, obviously... Fant- I mean, the, you cannot give Alonso any sniff of a chance because that dude will, jeez, that guy oh, will yeah. take oh, yeah. any little gap. He's um, he's he's fearless. I I want to know how he all does it. It's he's focusing on a race, and he's also saying, "Oh yeah, this person's doing that. That person's doing that." You think, "Oh no, you're doing that." I can't even do it from sitting down, but. Mm. Uh, Alpha, they've had some issues. Just a bit. <laughs> just, just a bit. Uh, Alpine and Alpha, yeah, shame. Where did we begin? And Haas as well. Can't forget and them. Haas, yeah, shame. Yeah, I mean, yeah. cheapest. If I was Gene Haas, the owner of Haas, I'd be going. Why am I doing this? Yes. It's... Hmm. And we'll get into Haas a little bit later, but uh, I don't. They had issues in practice. In practice, then uh, they also had issues in qualifying. 
Then mm. they also had where else? Doodly doodly do. And race. Uh, they've had issues. Yeah. And yeah, not good. I mean, again, this. Uh, that's what I was saying. Next weekend, I think, will be a much clearer view of where the teams actually are. Oh, another thing is, has did change something about Hulkenberg's car. So, that is... Uh, they changed it from when I was at Melbourne, when he was doing pretty well, and obviously this race, he did pretty... Poorly. Uh, I'm not going to say the word. Uh, was it? Was it? Was it? It's like rhyme with kaka poo poo. It, 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 yes, it does. S one S H one T. Yes, yes. That's yes, the that one. one, right? Got it. Got it. There you go. So, so now, yeah. they, they, come on then. Okay, so so let's 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 start getting into the moments of of the race. Okay, so we've talked about the safety car, um, for Stappen coming in, um, that really messed up his race, but I don't think it it, it mattered. I think Perez, as you were saying, it, he was matching him and bettering him. Uh, mm. He was dominant over that that racetrack. Um, it's it is so good to see, and it, and I think what it does is it's good to see Max in a um, a lesser position than his team, than his rival, <laughs> his main rival, which is his teammate. Um, and it brings out the character. You can see what he is. And mm. it's it's not pretty. It, and you can it, sort of see Max is spitting out his dummy. Yep. You can, you can see that now. He is. Yeah. yeah. Even with his own teammate, he should be happy for him, but he's not, is he? No, I mean, it, so, it's just a little tap on the back, well done, you know, like, well, no. Yeah. No, oh, but you, you know, <laughs> Jeez, yeah. Being grateful that you got that your team is doing. And let's not forget, you finished, you started second, and you finished second. So, you know, good result, mate. Well done. And I don't think some teams, when I came into pit, helped really, especially McLaren after the race. Oh no, shame. That didn't yeah. pit stop didn't really help there uh but uh two people didn't really go helpful that i'll get into later on but uh yeah it didn't. Ooh, you get later on what is this a three-hour yes. podcast no no we're almost at an hour you've, yes. you've got 10 minutes go into it get into it let's go okay so again has an alpine mm -hmm. what was a Thinking of leaving Hulkenberg and Ocken out until the last, well, sort of the last moment <laughs> on the same tires. You're thinking, you're crazy doing that. And I get that there could have been a red flag in the safety car, but was there? No, there wasn't. And I, I said to myself, well, I forgot what lap it I believe it was around about that 30 or something. I sat there thinking, just pit for Christ's sake <laughs> they're stopping people behind them like Nando yeah. Sonoda Oscar they're all they're all, they're all literally being held separate. up yeah yeah they're being held up well and I mean you know you can you can understand well, maybe I mean I don't understand maybe you do but I, I don't understand the, the thinking behind keeping them out maybe it's because they think the tire life will be longer and that they can go longer and they said that it was well house was happy with the times but again you still got obliged by the rules you've got to change your tires you can't stick in the same tires throughout the entire race because you're right. going to be disqualified yeah you get mandatory and... tires yeah that's right yeah you got to go with them Yep. You just can't say, oh no, they they ruined their race already, so there's no, they should have just pitched straight away, because they ruined their race. What they did, they just ruined their race, and what Alpine did was one of the most dangerous things I've ever witnessed, except mm. from them silly protesters running along Silverstone on the actual track when I was moving cars especially in a straight yeah. wing 
Yeah. It, it's, it was silly. It, I, I even said, what on earth? And it was confusing again in the uh, booth. Uh, commentators, Ted Kravitz, he was saying, oh yeah, there's people in the pit lane. Then, you know, Crofty's saying, well, they shouldn't be there. No, that's right. What the hell happened there? I don't know if that I, is FRA or if that is somebody oh, down there that uh, I would have thought that's FIA. So they're allowed to be down there, obviously. Right. As since, uh, since uh, it's there was an Audi on the last lap. But and, yeah, that's the thing, though. Why would you bring a car in on the last lap? I was gonna. I thought we was gonna have different minds about this, but it seems like we've got the same. Opinions. No, not at all. It's like when this when this was happening, I was like, well, "What the bloody hell's going on here?" I was like, "This is going to be disastrous." Somebody's going to. Yeah, I mean, one of them almost did step out in front of the flipping car when it was coming yeah. in. I if mean, people s- don't. Jesus. Some. <laughs> Obviously, some people obviously won't know what's happened. In the past, Marshall was split in half from a Formula 1 car at speed. He, he's amputated, basically, body parts everywhere from getting split in half by the front split of an F1 car. And you think, right. why should we go through this moment again? And especially right. on straight away where there's hundreds and millions of fans sitting there and they just see top half of someone's body get thrown up in the end a pair of someone's legs get yeah. thrown somewhere else. That shouldn't that shouldn't be. Yeah, and, and you know I, it's just there's somebody that was down there that should have uh, journalists well, there just I've scrambling to get the front well, position to get the best photograph and I, I believe there was marshals down there with them. So, and another thing is, I don't know why Alpine didn't say, oh, "No, yeah, it's too late to pick." Because there's only well, people. Exactly. They said, they said nothing like that. To exactly. Alcon. Why bring your driver in when it doesn't matter what happens? <laughs> what is the point on the last lap to bring your driver? In? What to put a pair of softs on to try and get the fastest lap? It it doesn't make sense. That a whole, yeah. it doesn't uh, make uh, sense. I, I said to myself, should there be a certain time period towards the end where you're not allowed to pit, right. and it gives the people oh, to set this, up? Oh my God! Hang on a second. This is one of the things I was talking about. I was thinking about while watching it. The quali, when uh, was it? Sarge went off and red flagged the the quali. And mm. Yuki Tsunoda was like 10 meters away from posting a really good time and was about across the line. And the red flag immediately came up and his lap was then obviously hindered. He couldn't do anything. Now, I'm sorry to get totally off the, the this whole debacle in the pit yeah. lane, but um, this is the whole point of this is that we just talk about whatever strikes us. But... Shouldn't there be a rule that if you are in front of a car that's had the accident, you should be able to finish your, your fast lap, your out lap? You should be able to finish. Yeah, but he wasn't. As soon as a red flag comes out, all cars have to stop or like, you know, slow down to 90% or whatever it is. But if you're, being from, yeah, if you're in front, if why you're, can't you finish it? If you're in front of wherever that incident is, you should just be allowed to... Exactly. Well, I, I can understand because you have the marshals and safety teams coming out of the pit, but it but doesn't that, take uh, but that, that uh, to break. Exactly. If, ex- exactly. And if there you, is a you as well, if you really need to use it. So uh, that that when when that happened, I was like, "Hang on, that's not fair on 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 Yuki Tsunoda." I mean, I don't, whatever his issue is or what, however he behaves, his attitude or whatever, I don't care. It's, it's just like the rules are that all cars have to slow down. And he was going to get out of disqualification to, you know, to make uh, quality two or whatever. And mm. he couldn't do it because of that red flag. And he was well ahead of where um, the car went off 
well ahead. And, and that just infuriated me. I was like, well, what stupid rule is that? I, I, I just blew my mind. Obviously, there's, you know, permutations like if you're just in front of the car that just went off and you still got like five corners to go through, I can understand. But if you're down the start finish and you're approaching the start finish, your lap time should stand. Mm. That's just my opinion. Anyway, yeah. that's that's just my that little talking about the pit lane and and the reasons yeah. and everything. Like, just brought that up, and I just couldn't understand that. But yeah, anyway, back to the pit lane chaos, the madness. Yeah, I think, I think there should be a certain lap where you're not. No, like how we are doing ACC at the moment. You have yes. like a certain time period to pit, and yes. if you don't follow that. Then you you're stuffed. You got to sit yes. in the same time, simple as, and that's how it should be. You can't. <sighs> yeah, I you know I think it must be like maybe two laps before the end of the race leader, not of where you are, but where the race leader yeah, is. The race leader's you... lapped you one lap, then you've got one lap to pit. That's it. Then it gives you enough time to set fastest lap as well. Exactly. Because because the, the thing is that that's what I don't understand is you come in, you fit new tires, you need a lap to get your tires up to speed, uh, warmed up, and then you do your fast lap. So they were on the last flipping lap. What is the why point of pitting? Why didn't they just not do what George did? And you exactly. see he got his lap, obviously. But why didn't they just not do how he did? Not basically the last lap where exactly. people... I just don't get that. And setting up for the uh, pole sitters and all that stuff. It's, yeah. Well, I you know, I guess, stuff. you know what, I guess if you look at it on, uh, but in this perspective, you go to yourself, well, they need to have things like this happen for the rules to change. So I guess if they do something about it, then great. If they don't, then they're Muppets. Hmm. And again, even the commentators are confused. Ted Kravitz, no, uh, Crofty thought there was running on the uh, on the wall, but there wasn't, and it it was just chaotic. I sat there really angry. Yeah. I'll say that I was really angry, and I don't know why Alpine didn't. Say, oh yeah, there's people are in pits so who unfortunately can't really come in. Right. And that's how it should have been. Yeah. They should I have agree. just closed straight down. Absolutely. Agree. You've got, to think, about You've got to think about people's safety. Safety. Yeah, they? absolutely. Absolutely. They didn't, they didn't think of that whatsoever. No. I, then, if, if I were the race stewards, I'd be going. What the hell is Alpine doing? And plus, even if he was in the lead, you'd think, and people are in his way, you think, why don't <laughs> it? None again, of it makes sense. It just doesn't make no, sense. Don't. Okay, end of. They're idiots. Uh, what next? Flipping uh, idiots. Um, <laughs> assemble. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, we we are fast running out of time here. So, um should we get to the high low muppet and rate the race? Oh, yes. Right. Do you want to go? I I let, I'll, I'll let you go. Okay. So, I think the the higher the race for me was uh the Red Bull, um particularly um seeing the growth of Perez um as the year has gone on as the season's gone on, um watching him getting better, matching and now beating Verstappen, I think it is absolutely wonderful. It's just a pity it's not a different car. That's the only thing. But that also brings me to the the high of like looking at seeing a, a Ferrari uh, doing well, um, which is it bodes well for next week. I think it's going to be very interesting, particularly now with the sprint race out the way. The low of the race for me was the FIA. Once again, they are leading the low pack. I'm not even going to go into it because it's too much for me to go in, but let me just say the low and the Muppet of the race are combined. Pit lane madness and the FIA. That is it. 
the Muppets is the pit lane madness. And then I would rate the uh, the race um, a seven. Um, I I couldn't think of any reason why I would want it to go higher than seven. Um, the racing itself was kind of like, eh, you know, it was it had little moments here and there. It certainly wasn't an Australia yeah. or whatever, but it wasn't like an overall like exhilarating race to watch, except yeah. for yeah. the madness at the end. All right. Your turn. Go for it. I'm all ears. My driver of the day. Am I even allowed to do this? Uh, oh, I don't yeah. know. But it's Oliver Behrman. He is my driver of the day and the weekend as well. Jesus. Yeah, absolutely he agreed. Was, yeah. He he was out of this world. Totally. And I said to you before the race yesterday. Oh yeah, I've already got my driver of the day. And yeah, you did, and I was trying to think, what? wait, what? The main race hasn't run. I didn't even think of the F2. No, then, good choice. Then Archer's, I said to myself, oh, yeah, I wonder who's run in the Formula 2. What happens? Oliver Behrman. And I said to myself, oh, yeah, he was my driver of the day for the sprint race yesterday. And I said, oh, well, so he is my driver of the day now, obviously. It was still going to be Oliver Behrman for being a driver of the day. Good choice. And the market, Good choice. The market of the day, there's a lot of teams here. Pass, Alpha, Tari, Alpine, and something idiots assemble. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's off the day in my books, but uh, right. Also, right. everyone can. Uh, and, what who would like to know what everyone else thinks as well. But uh the rate of the rate the rate of the race for me is a five. I, mm. as I said I did debate with myself. I said to myself, Oh yeah, it could be six and said that's way too high. Mm. Five point five, no. Five yeah. Four point mm. five yeah. four little it could have been. It's round about there. It's nowhere near your level in my books. Yeah, I, th- I think we have the same. But for once, it's it's not two brick walls talking to each other. I think it's it's two people agreeing that there's a lot of that isn't quite right in the FIA, right at the center of it. So yeah, I think our ratings are are probably fair. I would have settled for a five, absolutely, but I just rated it just a little bit higher. Hmm. And again, when. As I said, about the safety and all that stuff, and the entertainment purposes and all that stuff, it's clearly shown that they are doing it for the entertainment now, and they're yeah. not worrying about safety. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely agree. The FIA need to, for the umpteenth time this season so far, wake up. Anyway, they there we go. They should have years ago, but anyway... Uh, Oh, gonna, oh, let's talk about the F3, F2, uh, the F1 23 game quickly, shall we? Very quickly, because we're, we're out of time. Go on, eh? <laughs> That's it. We've talked about it. Well, there we go, Chad. It's the Formula One Breakdown Podcast with me, Just Rev, and with that other um, fella. <laughs> There's okay. nothing to, there is nothing to talk about the F1 23 game, man. Nothing. Because they've only released oh. a little video about the uh, the breaking point, um, uh, sort of like career thing. Jump to something. I'm I'm pretty annoyed with EA, as I said to you. Uh, Sorry, did say to me about it. As I said, oh yeah, e, e, EA is done a bit of a terrible job with it. I my head got bitten off of saying that, and <laughs> I'm not being funny. It's true. If they can't make a golf game, come on. No, they, 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 they've, the nice thing is with the, the golf game um, is that they they have rectified the issues, unlike the F-122. They haven't rectified a fucking thing. And, and there we go. yes, that was the word for the first the FIA. word for the FIA. Effing idiots <laughs> assemble. That's what the FIA stands for. But use your imagination, listeners, dear listeners. Yeah. Imagination is also, everything. Also, I think we should have a little competition as well. Tell us if you have a better name for the FIA in reviewing FIA. 
So right, like, you come up you with your it. moniker. Yeah, you come up with your own moniker of what you think the FIA stands for. Let us know in the comments below on YouTube and in the podcast. Get in touch with us on our Discord and on our yeah. YouTube channel and and everything else like that, and on Spotify and and all that sort of stuff. So. Um, yeah, that has been the Formula One Breakdown Podcast round for Azerbaijan with me, Just Trey. Oh, yeah, Aiden, Aiden. Yay. Yay. Uh, <laughs> yay. Uh, we will be back next week, then the week after, then a week after, then a yeah, bit of a break. Right. Then four races, yeah, in a row, or five races, or four weeks in a row. Oh, or something we are like going to be a busy. Yes, we, we really are indeed. Are so we'll we'll catch you all then next time round for round five Miami. Thank you everybody for listening. Cheers everybody. Have a fantastic Goodbye. day wherever you are. <laughs>